Hello and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be looking at something a little bit on the pricey side but oh is it sexy. Now then a little while ago we did look at the Asmodus Ohmsmium um, Kodama edition which I think is absolutely gorgeous. My wife has absolutely fallen in love with this bad boy. Um, but I managed to steal it from her. So uh, yeah, we're now we're going to be looking at the Kodama edition of the Minikin V2, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, and also, just to let you know, in the up close, what we are going to do as well is I'm going to show you how I got this kind of glassier finish to it. Now, obviously, there is going to be some caveats to that, and uh, this camera angle isn't really showing it off very well, but um, I will talk about that a little bit more when we come back from the up close. But essentially, what we've got here is the Minikin V2 in very, very pretty clothes. So let's just have a dive down up close, check this bad boy out before we come back up top, and i give you my final thoughts. Come on in. And here we have the packaging for this Asmodus Minikin Go Kodama, or Minikin V2 Kodama edition. And uh, I've got to say, I mean, I, I do love the way they do their packaging. We had something similar with the Ohmsmium, but I think this one, with this carved out Asmodus going on on the top there, just looks the business, it really does. Not a whole bunch there to look at. There is a sticker under there, which I doubt you're going to be able to read under the camera lights, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, it just does, do, tells you all the normal kind of gubbins you would expect to see on a box. Now then, if we undo this little catch on the front, ta-da! Um, we'll look at the mod in a second because it is absolutely glorious. And then underneath here, if you can get this bad boy out, like so, whoop, come out you bugger. There is a battery warning sheet going on there. There we have the uh, warranty card and all that sort of good stuff. And we do have the full spec and uh, and how to me and you are going on right there. So let's move that box out of the way and look at this. And I've got to say, I think this is absolutely glorious. Those colours in that green, in that wood, I think are really, really nice. Now, this is to all intent and purpose a uh, a hybrid, uh, sorry, a uh, uh, just a, a stab wood. Although there is a little bit of that hybrid action going on here just with this blue section going on right at the bottom now one of the things that i want to highlight here because you know i mean even when it comes to some of the high-end mods um you tend to get a lot of gaps and all that sort of stuff whereas we're pretty much gap free running all the way along the bottom here where we've got this uh, um kind of matchy matchy with the the stainless steel button uh, or doors for the battery so i think that does look absolutely fantastic um i think it's really really well made obviously see there's no protection up the top there which gives it that nice smooth seamless kind of look maybe that could have been nicer if that was rounded off a little bit more but uh, I'm certainly not upset about it in the slightest now then the screen is pretty much the same as we saw on the uh, minikin v2 in fact it's exactly the same as we saw in the minikin v2 um, the button pretty much exactly the same now the one thing that i will point out is because this uh, stabilized wood is uh, is there and it isn't the the sort of normal frame that we have on the regular v2 it is super light it really is a light piece of kit until you get your until you get your um batteries in there now the 510 at the top is a little bit different it's a little bit funky on that 510 now i'll come to that when we go to the up top section but i've had no problems with this one whatsoever now, obviously, we've got the normal menu system, which we'll look at shortly. But the big difference between this and the regular uh, Minikin V2 is this battery door. Now, at the bottom here, we do have kind of venting going on when it is closed. But to open it, all you're doing is you're just pulling that back and it springs up like so, which is very, very nice indeed. You do have the battery orientation on the back of that battery door as well, and you can see the contacts down in that tube right there. So let's just pop some batteries in here so we can have a little play, shall we? Bang that in there, and you'll see that here is where you've got the uh, a, a kind of a contact for passing the electricity through from the from the the base of the door through to the board and all the wiring and all that sort of stuff. That will tap onto this little um, plate section here. Um, all to, all you got to do to close it is you just push that forward, and then you close it down. And you can see here that there is a little catch 
and that goes under the little catch that's just there. So all you're doing is you're pushing it down and then sliding it forward and you close. And I think that's just a really elegant way of doing it. Um, and like I say, this gap around the side there, that is for venting. So I'm perfectly happy with that being a little bit of a gap, to be honest with you. Now then, to open it up, you'll see that... Oh, there we go. It's exactly the same as what we've dealt with before with the previous Minikin. Um, and once again, if you've not seen the previous review, go and check out my previous Minikin V2 review because it just shows you that, I mean, obviously up here we've got the um, wattage adjustment and all that sort of stuff. Once you've accepted it, you do need to slide down to be able to make any movements. Once you do slide down, you can touch on wattage and that will move that around or you can slide down and touch on the power and that takes you to the uh, the apps, the, the menu, which is super simple and easy. But like I say, go and check out my previous Minikin V2 review on that one. One of the things that I want to show you on this is the only issue I have with the um, the mod as a whole is the finish. I mean, it's very nice, and it feels like a kind of like a matte finish. And you can kind of see here that it is kind of it's not dull, but it's not shiny shiny. It's got that kind of very kind of matte. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only word I can think of describing it, kind of look to it. And for me personally, I do like a shinier stab wood. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how I go about doing that. Uh, fairly simple sort of process. This is the pack of uh, micro mesh pads that we're going to be using today. And like I say, this is for my, the way I like to use it. If you were to do this, I don't know if this will void your warranty. It certainly may do. And I am holding no responsibility if you royally knack at your mod so uh, I just do need to make that absolutely clear you can see that we do have it tells us all about the the uh, grades of the micro mesh going on here and uh, this is what we're going to be going through I find that if you stack them so the the third the, the thickest one is at the top and then you just take them down and move them one at a time that's the easiest way to remember which ones you've done at any given time now one thing that I will do on this one just for a little bit extra safety is I am going to get some masking tape and just throw that over the top of the uh, over the screen here it's unlikely I'm going to uh, going to sort of go over it and go onto the screen, but it's just a little bit extra safety from my point of view because I am a clumsy bastard. And this is going to be not a perfect finish on this one because I'm doing it quickly in front of the camera, but uh, hopefully it's going to give you an idea of the sort of effect that you can get from this. Right, so that's more or less covered the screen. That'll do for me for the time being. But what I'm going to do on camera is I'm just going to show you on one side of it just to... Uh, give you that kind of vibe if you like. So this is the uh, finish we're starting with. And what we're going to do is we're going to go work our way through. You can see that I've used this one already. Um, we're going to work our way through the grades. So let's crack on then, shall we? I imagine I'll probably put some funky music back on the back of this one. Right, so that is stage one. Now it is a little bit lighter as you can see than the other side at the moment and that's because we've got a lot of dust and all that sort of stuff kicking around but uh, we are prepping it if I put a little bit of sort of spit on there there we can see that that does kind of cut through and we are getting a little bit lighter so um, or a little bit smoother so let's carry on working through the grades this point we can start seeing that this is the side that isn't polished and this is the side that is and we're getting a little bit more of a shine going on here already and we've got another four pads to go through. And there we have it we are now done so hopefully this is going to show up under the lighting but now we have a really glassy finish on that side compared to what we started off with here which is quite the dull kind of uh, sort of more of a, a, um, 
a matte finish going on. On this side here now, we are much, much shinier. It feels like glass. It really does. Now, the only thing to be aware of is uh, obviously when you're doing this sort of stuff, any nicks or dinks like that one will be a little bit more evident because obviously if it catches the light, you may see those. So uh, yeah, anything like that, which is just part of, of using wood, you know, it happens. So I wouldn't be too upset about it. Um, but uh, that may turn up a little bit more. But at the same time as well, when you if you do do this, make sure you go in the same plane of motion the whole time. Don't try and do swirls or anything like that. Just straight up and down and there you go. But uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be a little bit more time spent on that. But to me, that is a lovely finish. That's great. But that is even better and that's how I like to see a stabilized wood and I think it just makes the the colors pop just that little bit more as well that was the up close with the minikin v2 kodama edition from Asmodus then and i did give you a brief kind of showing of how i kind of how i kind of went over this to give it a little bit of a smoother finish i haven't spent too long doing it to be honest with you it can get really really glassy if you spend some time over it now then i do have to caveat once again that if you decide to do what i did if you fuck it up it's your problem it's got nothing to do with me as modus probably won't honor what you've done because you've messed with their with their mods so um it's your responsibility and if you sort it up then that's that's that okay so i do need to point that out because it's very very important um for me personally i thought it was worth a shot i liked the finish i did like the finish but for me especially when it comes to the value of this kind of mod having a little bit of a smooth a little bit of a glassier finish for me was kind of it was the it just sealed the deal for it being a really top class mod for me to use personally now then these aren't cheap these are not cheap at all on the Asmodus website at the moment they are selling for $349.99 which is a fair whack of money now most of them are out of stock although it looks as though there are three there's like a green one a reddish and beige one and a bluey one that look like they are still in stock on the uh, Asmodus website i did have a quick google i couldn't see anyone that i knew that had them in stock in the uk so uh, by all means go and have a little google there now the 350 quid is um or 350 dollars is a lot of money it is a lot of money however the, one of the things that I think about when I'm looking at um, sort of where it sits in the marketplace, if you like, is the fact that um, a massively popular mod has obviously been the M17 from Axis. And that is going um, anywhere from 425 down to, um, I don't know, 375 or whatever. And that, yeah, are they single, single 18, 650 or are they LiPo? I can't remember. I cannot remember. But um, possibly lipo, possibly lipo. But um, but yeah, I mean, and they're big chunky mods. This is a pretty small mod. We're looking at about four mil extra in height to the regular Minikin V2. So not very much there. I think we've got about three mil difference front to back. Um, and maybe two mil difference width wise so we are a little bit on the thicker side with this one um but it's not it's not still a large mod for a dual 18650 mod i think it's a little corker i really really do i like the battery door i like the way it performs i like the touch screen um, and i said that in my original minikin v2 review I think it's just all in all a little crack let's have a little i've got the medusa sitting on top of here at the moment from geek Vape. let's have a little toot It performs as you'd expect. It's the same board that they use in the V2 Minikin. Um, and so I think it's fantastic. It's got a great amount of battery life to it. Um, and whether you're pumping through at sort of 120 watts, or I mean, I generally am vaping this anywhere between 25 watts if I'm using a sort of a, a mouth to lung kind of affair, all the way up to, I don't know, maybe 99 watts at a push if I've got a monster Clapton coil going in there. I don't often break the 100 watt mark because I 
build to vape kind of below that so all in that being said i mean i get a lot of battery life from it and i really really do enjoy using it i think it's comfortable as you like in the hand um it just for me i think this is a cracking stab wood or hybrid mod and i think they look great they perform really really well um one of the things you may see from some early reviews of this is the resistance that was jumping up and down and i too had a similar problem i had a unit before this that did exactly the same thing now I did contact his motors about this and I did want to uh, get involved with them and find out what was going on uh, they told me I'm just seeing if I can hook up my email here because then I can give you a little bit more information with the email up now, I can tell you a little bit more of the feedback that I had back from Asmodus. Um, first of all, with that original um, product that I had from those, the original Kodama with the jumping resistance, they came back to me and said, we want to take a moment to apologize wholeheartedly for the problems you've been experiencing with the Minikin V2 Kodama. The item you received is a prototype. We found that there may be some issues with the welding, so soldering, on the 510 connection. We've now had the issues with the regular Minikin V2 and found that the wood on the 510 connection could be causing these irregularities uh, this is the only issue this issue only came up on the prototype batch and not with the current batch that they have which was great so that one went back and all that sort of stuff so I got this one in return and that's fantastic um, and still from a customer service point of view they came back to me and said it's come to our attention that the Minikin V2 Kodama edition you've recently received for us uh, may not be compatible with the Smock TF V8 tank it is however compatible with the TF V8 baby and TF V8 big baby when you use the TF V8 tank the resistance will jump when fired we're currently looking into this matter and hope we find the reasoning for this as soon as possible we apologize for the inconvenience and hope it doesn't deter you from the high standards we strive to achieve from all of our products so they do say and i think nick pointed this out in his last vlog or tuesday bro tuesday that um yeah for some reason it doesn't like the tvf8 tank and i don't understand why that is i've not had any issues with this with anything that i've put on it i've not had the jumping resistance it, everything has worked absolutely spectacularly on this particular mod and uh you know, I am more than happy with that, and I'd be more than happy to tell you if I did continue to have an issue. So, as it is, where it's placed in the market, I think price-wise, is pretty much spot on, really. Uh, I think it is a nice price for the quality work that you get. The finish when you receive it may or may not be to your choice. Um, but for me, I mean, like I say, I just went over it with a few micro mesh pads and it, it's come out lovely. And that's what I really, really like. One day when I've got sort of a better working hand, I will uh, go over it and get a really glassy finish on it. But uh, even without doing that, I think it's a quality looking little mod it's very very pretty indeed and that's about it ladies and gentlemen so i can't tell you any more than that because it is essentially the minikin v2 but uh it's just got a very pretty coat on and that's about it thank you very much for watching i've been dean the vaping biker this has been the minikin v2 kodama edition and i think it's bloody glorious thanks very much for watching and i'll see you on the next one Hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and have it large!